Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Consulting Podcast. This is your host, Mohamed Misba, aka The Consulting Guy. Today, I'm joined by Anna Yudartseva, who is a senior consultant at Ernst & Young. Uh, she's based out of London. Anna, very happy to have you. How are you? Thank you so much for the invite, first of all, Mohamed. I think <laughs> that is a brilliant idea and super happy to be here with you today. I'm doing well. Um, it's Sunday, so um, I just decorated my Christmas tree and very happy about that. How are you doing? Good, good. I saw that. I saw that. And I, I forgot to mention your intro. So you are also the, the founder and you run way into consulting on Instagram. Uh, and, and that's why I know that, you, you know, you're setting up your Christmas and holiday decorations. So for those <laughs> who don't follow her, um, uh, really happy to have you, Anna. You are based out of London, so I know it's a little bit late for you on a Sunday uh, evening. So thank you for doing this. But uh, for those who don't know you, do you mind giving a quick intro? Absolutely, happy to do so. Um, so I am um, a senior consultant at EY um, based in London. I actually started um, my consulting journey in Edinburgh and moved to London um, just about a year ago. So also happy to talk about the difference between um, sort of life in the regions, between um, consulting life in London. And um, I do technology consultant. So I am in the, the tech transformation team, um, work across different sectors. So I worked in public sector, private sector. So it's um, retail, infrastructure. Um, so basically a lot of different clients. And um, yeah, uh, in my free time, I run an Instagram channel. And um, yeah, I'm more than happy to talk about that as well. Absolutely. And we'll get into all of those uh, in, in quite some detail. Uh, before we talk about more of the consulting side, right, and, and more of the uh, what you do at EY, just wanted to know, and I asked this uh, to all the guests that come on, did you know about consulting as a career uh, when you were in university? Um, and, and if not, how did you find out about it? Um, actually, I did not. So in <laughs> my degree was four years because I started in Scotland. And basically, that's how the education structure there. So BA in England is three years, in Scotland is four years. Mm -hmm. And um, the way I actually heard about Big Four, um, so my friends were quite interested in it. And um, as you know, companies usually do a lot of presentations on campus and they organize this social event. So I actually went there um, just for drinks. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't <laughs> interested in the actual part at the beginning. That was, I think it was my first year. Okay. So that's how I actually heard about Big Four and about MBB and just like what consulting actually is. And um, that really captured my interest. And um, I kind of, yeah, that was probably the first time I heard about it. So not really one of those stories where, you, you know, you knew when they wanted from, to be from a day consultant. one, right? A exactly. Lot. I, I, honestly, I think there's more of the stumbled upon consulting stories, at least the, the folks that I've talked to, than uh, folks that knew from the get go, whether it's uh, first day in university, I'm going to be a consultant. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, and your story is quite similar to mine, where it wasn't a happy hour. It was a it was a it was a dinner somewhere, right? Oh, One nice. of my friends of friends had invited us for dinner and they were chatting about their aunt um, and what she does for work and just what her tasks were and how her day-to-day, -day, the travel and different clients conversation was going, it seemed very interesting. So I, I, I sort of eavesdropped and I was like, hey, what do you do? I need to find out what your aunt does. And, and I, I like that career. And this was my junior year uh, in, in university. So we, in, in the US, we have four years of uh, university undergrad. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I found about consulting. Right, I was, nice. I was doing engineering. So, what what was your uh, undergrad uh, or or the equivalent of uh, in university? What were you studying? Uh, yes, yeah, so I did management, and um, so basically, you could um, pick different subjects in your first two years. So, yeah. I also did international relations, and I did psychology. So, I actually think psychology, especially social mm. psychology, mm. Um, like helps me a little bit in my job now. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't say I use everything I learned in my degree in my job. <laughs> I probably use about 5%, but yeah, it, it is, it, it, I think it was like a natural kind of progression for me to go into consulting. Probably 50% um, of my like uh, friends and my peers in my course okay. um, 
went into some sort of consulting, which is quite a high number, I guess. Yeah, very. Uh, that's a. That's a. I don't. I don't know if that's just the case of that region, but that seems uh, quite high for folks to land in the consulting sort of career. Uh, I guess they something. hire a lot as well. Like that's good. I yeah. Guess. yeah. And most yeah. of them are at EY or just just in general consulting across all the board? over, all like over. all over really boutiques, um, mm. big four, MBB. I mean, wouldn't even say consulting. Um, some of them do audit, uh, some do tax, so um, right, right. all sorts of different things. Totally, totally. Um, and, and you mentioned uh, um, you studied psychology, right? Um, uh, so how uh, and and uh, that you are the five percent that you do leverage. At work, I'm assuming that's the five percent, uh, including <laughs> management. I'm, I'm just joking. So, what what uh, techniques or psychological, I guess, uh, uh, I don't want to say games. That's a pretty uh, negative connotation there. But how, how do you use your psychology background, um, starting from the interview that you had, um, and then how does that transfer to your day to day? What are some pointers? Yeah, that's actually, that's an excellent question because I didn't even think about that like that way, what I apply directly. Yeah. Uh, but I guess now when I reflect on it, um, it's just probably um, trying to understand what the other person is really trying to say mm -hmm. um, because it really depends on culture. You know, some people are not going to tell you, oh, this is, you know, this is not good. So you just kind of need to read between the lines. So some of it is helpful. Actually, statistics as well. Okay. Uh, we did quite a lot of statistics um, in psychology. So um, it actually helped me quite a bit with my uh, numerical tests when I was mm. applying uh, for different jobs. And um, yeah, I think some some part of it. So um, yeah. It is quite helpful. It, it is, it is. And so why why is it that people, and I, I, I agree with you, I think, especially in the corporate world, um, we tend not to say how we feel, right? Our actions passively show and, and uh, um, communicate our, our intents, but why, why don't people just come out and say it? Like, hey, this is not what I like, or I don't like, you know, to the extreme, I don't like you, or I don't like the work you're doing, or you missed this thing. Why, why, why do you think that is? Um, I think probably for me, um, you constantly feel like there is so much competition mm -hmm. and you feel like, okay, if I'm going to say something, I'm not going to get promoted. And there are like, you know, hundred people in line who are more yeah. than happy to replace me. So you constantly, personally for me, and I know maybe that's also the same for my friends, um, that you just need to stick with it. Like, mm. you know, whether you like it or you don't like it, but I noticed that my perception with this change and so the more senior you get, the more you yeah. realize is that, you know, uh, people actually do care about what um, I would like to say. And ultimately it's better for the business when your interests are aligned. If Excuse you're me. not doing something you actually enjoy doing, then probably your performance and your results are not gonna be hundred percent. So it is better to align those two, but yeah. Um, it's a, it's I a challenge. Think, I, I, I don't absolutely. know the answer, right? I'm, I'm asking, uh, you know, having spent almost nine years now in consulting, I'm, I'm asking it to this state, right? Whether it's internal or it's with the client, um, there's always a struggle trying to extract, extract the, um, the real uh, truth, right? Or absolutely. behind communication or intents, right? Um, and it happens on both sides. I think we as consultants do it and our clients do it as well. Um, and I think you, you bring up a very honest and fair point around uh, a lot of the times on the consulting side, we stay quiet, right? Uh, to sort of uh, not get chastised or not be the one standing out uh, as the one asking the questions or, or seemingly if you ask something and then it is true, then you are sort of uh, uh, putting truth to whatever is being discussed or, or passively being dis uh, talked about. Versus if it's never brought up, then you're sort of in the gray area, uh, which, which, which may tend to cause longer term uh, challenges uh, just from a work perspective and the client perspective. But it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult one. I don't think I have the answer, but it's a, it's a truth point. I absolutely agree with you. And also there's a little bit of that perception. I don't know how it is for you, is that the client is always right. And even when you know, you know, they might not be. Um, Who came up with that the first time? It's, it's a retail example, right? Like the customer is always right. 
Exactly. Uh, we but, we need to, yeah. <laughs> but I, but uh, let me counter that, right? If uh, so, at you know, c- c- uh, clients pay a premium for consultants, right? When you price projects, typically, and I I'm not saying this is the case throughout the board, depending on the engagement, you are paying premium for the folks that you're bringing in to be uh, to consult you and give you advice for whatever you don't know or whatever you want to implement, whatever. Um, so, isn't it? counterintuitive to say the client's always right when they're hiring you to, you know, point out the, the wrongs that they have or fix the wrongs that exactly. they have. But exactly. we still are afraid to talk, you know, speak up. Um, you know, it's a, it's a perspective to think about sometimes. That is a very good point. And I think, that, you know, we need to um, make this sort of cultural shift potentially to, and it's, I mean, especially when you're a junior. Um, oh, yeah. It's a, uh, bit difficult sometimes to actually stand up and say what you know what you really think um so yeah that is uh it is it is difficult and if i go back to uh, you know your points initially especially when you're when you're sort of rising throughout the ranks it is it is challenging to say pause what about this or or you know why did we miss this or etc and it may point back to you um and and the fear of that sometimes prevents us but i i also think you make a very good point that um, and I think this is where it's headed. As you get more and more senior, which means you're spending more and more time with maybe the same clients or a, a specific set of clients, you're building better relationships with them, right? Yep. And, and that means you can have a lot more honest and direct conversations, uh, maybe behind closed doors, right? On a one-on-one or, a, or a, an email thread, not with everyone. That, that enables you to say what you want to say, right? In a professional setting, in a professional context which doesn't naturally happen day one mm-hmm. and, and also to team members. Yeah. And even sometimes it's just the honesty to say, look, you don't need consultants at this point in time. You know, <laughs> you might need us in you know five years or five months, but you don't right. need us right now. It's just that, you know, building that relationship, it definitely helps to, um, to be honest. I mean, yeah. in my kind of, I, in my life and in my career, um, one of the principles I have is I really do try to stay honest. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, definitely need to. No, no, it, it's, uh, it, uh, by the way, to, to flag a distinction here, honesty does not mean uh, your, your wording is direct, right? You still have to package the messaging and tailor the messaging mm-hmm. based on the recipient. Uh, right. Just because you're honest doesn't mean you're just going to go out and say your baby's yeah, absolutely. ugly. Right. Uh, and that's, yeah. that's a, yeah, right. There's a way to talking about the structures that they have and the processes they have been following for years. Right. And all of a sudden this fresh consultant team, consulting team or consultant or whomever is here to tell me otherwise. Mm-hmm. Right. And it, that's the scale. I think that, you know, when we talk about consultants yes. need good communication skills, that's what they're referring to. Yeah, absolutely. That's probably the number one skill um, you as a consultant. As a successful consultant, if you want to build a very successful long-term career, consulting career, um, you need to master. I would say that that is probably top top three. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. It just reminds me of uh, one of the, the, the easiest books to read and probably most valuable for consultants is a book called uh, Weekend Language. Um, I, I, I don't know if you picked it up. I actually have it back there somewhere. I forget the author and I, I could, um, I could link it when I post this, but it just talks about how on the weekend, when we're sitting down with friends, we, we speak in regular human language, right? Like, oh, this happened and that happened and this didn't mess up to our friends, right? Or we're telling a story. However, when we are in a professional setting, we sort of use jargon and we try to hide behind concepts and, like to this day, I don't know what transformation means. I, 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 I've been doing transformation for nine years and I hope this is a message I could, <laughs> I could easily say, but what is, it's, it's, everyone wants a digital transformation. Everyone wants to transform yep. to the better, right? But it's such what a, does it mean? It's, it, what does it mean? It's such a nebulous concept. And we're not, when, when at the end of the day, if you are a client that's hiring someone and uh, you know, you are an executive you want to know what it really means and how it's going to impact your business and how it's going to make you better. And that doesn't come from jargon words or sort of trying to dance behind ideas and fluff. Um, and, and you have to be direct. So I, I definitely recommend that book to everyone. It's not, it's meant to just be honest, right? Be direct, be honest, be specific. Uh, and it's a very light, I think it's like 80 pages, uh, very fun, very easy read. 
I'm def that that is going to be on my list. So uh, yeah. if you could link the book, I'm definitely going to read that. Certainly, certainly, certainly. Going to be okay, my so festive read. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I would just want some downtime over the next couple of weeks. But yes, if that, uh, <laughs> if that gets you uh, relaxed. Um, so yeah, going back to your um, university. So after, you know, you're doing psychology, you're doing management. Um, you have an inclination towards consulting now because of um, what you heard over this happy hour. Um, you also did some internships, um, right? And, and were they consulting related or were they non-consulting related, but you were always thinking about consulting in your background? Actually, none of my internships were consulting related. And originally I thought I was going to do marketing. So in my first two years, I did a couple of internships um, in PR and marketing. One was in China, which was a really, really cool oh, experience. Wow. So I learned quite a lot about um, sort of Chinese market and um, different strategies you would use there. So um, that was really cool. And um, in my third year, I did an internship um, in asset management. So um, again, not quite consulting um, related, um, which kind of proves the point that you don't need to do, you know, five consulting internships if you yeah. want to work in consulting. Most people I know have never done a consulting internship. Same. Yes, it's going to be easier probably for you to get in. Um, well, that's again, quite arguable. And um, yeah, so um, I also work part-time in a student-run consultancy business, which I think if I would say number one tip for students who would like to get into consulting is to try to get involved in one of those um, enterprises, I don't know, initiatives, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. And if you, they don't have it in your university, there are um, a number of different um, networks or organizations that can actually help you set it up, which again, is going to be even more impressive if you do start um, this sort of student-run consultancy business um, at your university. I think that's probably, you know, that was the number one thing that actually really helped me to get a job in consulting and to understand what consulting actually is. Because um, hmm. I think a lot of people, until they actually do it, don't understand what that means. Um, so I think that was something that really did help me. And is that something you're still doing or was that when you were back in university? When I was back at, back at okay. uni. So we were basically working with um, local clients pro bono, um, hmm. which was great for them ultimately and great for us because we didn't get opportunity to work with real life clients, um, businesses, and for them, they would just basically get their free advice. So um, that was very a interesting situation. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And, and at, at the university level, what I guess, what types of engagements or projects or uh, to use your word advice uh, were you giving and, and what types of clients? Just curious. Yeah, so basically um, they were all local small businesses. So um, okay. that could be your um, small hotel or that could be like mm. a local restaurant, a local deli. Um, so all sort of different businesses. And for example, one of the clients that I worked with was the um, hotel. So um, they realized that the um, occupancy rate was very low during some periods in time. So we kind of analyzed that, you know, why is that and how you can attract more customers. Right. The very other nice. one was the um, um, restaurant. So they wanted to expand into a different city. So we wanted to understand, you know, what's the like, um, basically kind of your strategy um, yeah yeah I mean, it's, on it's a very crazy. small scale <laughs> yeah, yeah and it's, it's like the the case interviews that we get right exactly like for exactly. interviews literally that I mean, i've done case interviews where it's it's exactly that there's an expansion case you have a you have a company that wants to expand penetrate into a newer market how do you assess that and, and you're exactly. doing it live very interesting yeah not not a lot of people i think do that and uh, at least i when i was uh, i did undergrad in engineering um, I no exposure really to cool. consulting whatsoever. We had obviously engineering uh, projects and we had requirements and you built something tangible, but it wasn't like, you know, your case where it's um, you have a real world problem and you need advice and they're hiring or, or getting con consulted by a group of experts. It was really cool experience. And uh, well, frankly, sometimes we didn't know what we were doing, but <laughs> you kind of learn on the job and you still have to write your final report like you would yeah. do in let's say strategic consulting. Um, so it was it was a good learning learning experience for sure. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I, I again, uh, to, to be a little bit provocative there, uh, it, it's still true to this date, right? I mean, even our profession, do we always know what we are doing? Learn every day. Like, right? I feel like <laughs> I learn every single day. <laughs> same, same. Right? There's so many cases where you may get stumped by a client question um, or, or you're, you know, most stressful or challenging is if you're presenting something and then there's a question right for you. Okay. And I think balancing that is a, is a very interesting act. Um, and I don't think the expectation anyways, is that one person knows everything, right? I think that's very unfair. And I don't, I, I haven't met many clients, if at all, any that have that, you know, true expectation that hey, Mohammed or Anna or whomever, you're supposed to know everything. That's why you uh, have a team as well. Right, okay. exactly. Which is, yeah, absolutely. You know, you could be good in one thing, I could be good in another thing. And that's why the best teams I worked with are very diverse, come from different backgrounds, different countries, um, but working towards sort of the same objective. Uh, those were the best teams. Okay. And um, I do actually miss that kind of uh, vibe in the office. We all get together and you, you get a chance to brainstorm. Okay, because of COVID and, and working remote or generally your engagements are not um, spread across anymore? Um, I would say that my team is a lot smaller now. So I do like working in teams where you have at least like, you know, five to 10 people, which I think brings a lot of yeah. cool perspectives. And especially if you have a lot of um, kind of less senior um people working with you let's say if you have managers if you have senior consultants if you have analysts i think mm -hmm. that brings a cool vibe because um realistically how much time does a partner have to kind of engage with you on a day-to-day -day basis <laughs> probably not much so um yeah I unless they're unless they're hitting you with that please fix <laughs> oh yeah exactly that is the that is the engagement you would get that, that's the <laughs> But I, I think that those are the nuggets you sort of take from, right? And, and try to understand where they're coming from. I, I used to think the same way, right? Um, when I was an analyst, consultant, and even manager, right? Um, a lot of those, please fix emails or update this, you, you sort of get pissed off about, mm -hmm. right? Because you're like, hey, I, I, I worked over this and I, I spent so many hours putting this together and it's getting ripped apart. Um, yeah. And, and you start to appreciate okay. it the more and more you do consulting. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the more senior you get, because maybe there's a message that you're missing. Maybe there's a different communication they had with the more senior uh, stakeholder and, and they're trying to tweak it into that. Um, it definitely well. comes with experience and with their knowledge of the client. And absolutely, like at first I would take it personally. I would think, oh, I'm horrible. I can't do this. I can't do that. But now mm -hmm. I just think like, it, it is is definitely a learning journey and um, it takes time to realize how to actually, you know, give feedback and take feedback. Yeah. Um, so have there been cases where you just had enough of it and, and or, or maybe a partner or someone senior that just was way too aggressive? Have there been cases at EY thus far? Um, actually... And I'm not saying it just you don't have to say names. No names. No names. <laughs> <laughs> I have been very fortunate and lucky because okay. I would always have really, really nice sort of managers proofreading my work before it okay. would go to someone more senior. Okay. So um, everyone has been very nice. But yes, of course, there were cases where I would get a deck completely, you know, marked up, not a single, like it's red everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, you know, you feel discouraged sometimes, but you realize that, you know, a um, cu couple of days later, you look at the deck and you think, oh gosh, that, that is amazing. You know, that it's looks 10 now. times better. And you actually feel proud for what you can, you know, achieve together as a team. And sometimes I also, you know, comment on my like director's work and they say, oh, that's a good input. So um, it's nothing personal. You know, we're all, uh, we're all learning as you it's said. It's a common so. goal. Absolutely. You know, yeah. if, if, if their comment can make our work better, great. If my comment can, can make our work better, then also that's good. That's great. It's yeah. all about the outcome. Certainly, certainly. Or, or they're um, maybe the more, you know, the senior managers or the managers, they're taking the direct heat <laughs> for everything that's been submitted. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It happens. So, so what do you do at EY? Um, you talked about technology consulting. Um, let, talk us through that a little bit more. What's your day-to-day? -day? What types of projects? Absolutely. So basically working on 
let's say large transformation projects for example one of my latest ones where we would uh, totally replace and the um, uh, finance management platform so okay. basically integrating um 15 different software uh, platforms that they were using before putting it into one and um, the other ones that could be um, SAP deployment could be Oracle um, basically yeah everything that you would do in your digital transformation oh, oh, buzzword buzzword. <laughs> oh no <laughs> I was gonna ask um, you what, what's a tra- please tell what me what a transformation, transformation. I, I <laughs> I, once I get it, I'm going to put it back here on the wall. Like transformation <laughs> equals, this is the definition. Great idea. Yeah. Great I, idea. I, and it's, it's, it, I know because, it, you know, we say, it, I, I say it almost on a daily basis and I catch myself now, right? Like I, okay, stop, go say this and get to the real, what you're trying to say, right? Weekend language, like get to the real point. And it's hard. It's That's hard. Ba- I, yeah. Sorry. No, no, go, go for it. Go for it. That's basically like the way I think about about it now is that would my parents would my like grandparents understand what I'm saying you know if they wouldn't then I'm gonna try to because sometimes clients this is the first time they hear a word so it is important to provide either some sort of context yeah or to know to use uh, consulting buzzwords so yeah I, I <laughs> that is, that is a very good point yeah, I'm actually trying to find that website. So there's a website that generates random jargon for you that sound like very serious and nice sentences. I you can just that. go out and say, I, I wish I had <laughs> it. Um, there it is. It's called uh, where is it? A, a tricksnet.com VS generator. I'll link this too. It's it's hilarious. It's called the corporate BS generator. <laughs> nice. So, <laughs> so can you use it in presentation. You can you can say like I let me just reiterate. So my my generation just came out to say effectively drive corporate metrics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that sounds it sounds good. Continually Perfect. mesh cloud-centric platforms. <laughs> have you ever used that one? <laughs> no, I have not, but as uh, I'm gonna add it to my list. Let's try something else. Let's try another uh, consulting dr- buzzword dramatically coordinate out of the box leadership oh wow distinctly is... iterate best of breed metrics <laughs> <laughs> oh. i mean it's it's sound it's funny we're laughing at it but it's the type of language we use right and uh it's uh i'll give you i'll tell you a story so we were pitching to this client um a year and a half or so ago and we had engaged one of our uh, design studios to help package some of our creatives and, and come up with like a very visual and nice pitch. Um, and and the, the way the, the process was that we would draft up everything in notes and sort of our ideas around the slides. And we sent it to this team, mm-hmm. right? And they came back and this one, uh, uh, one person in particular, uh, Lily Yu, would love to have you on the podcast if you're listening. Um, she came back and said, I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> like none of these words make sense. And, and she's, you know, she wasn't in the consulting practice. She, she was a designer at heart. She's like, what does this mean? What are you trying to say? And, and, you know, my answer to the effect was, oh, we're helping them, you know, we're helping transform and we're setting up digital. And she's <laughs> like, what does that mean? I still don't know what you mean. And I, it was like, aha, I'm like, holy shit, it's, it's, it's for real. Right? I, I wish I knew what that means, but. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like good words, right? But exactly. it doesn't make sense. Exactly. Oh, well, it's, it's a great website. I'm definitely going to yeah, check it out. I'll also link this in. It's, it's funny. If you're ever in trouble, right, you could ping your friend. Hey, give me something, <laughs> give me something quick. Uh, efficiently formulate cloud-centric materials. Progressively sp- uh, simplify standard complaint e-business. This is hilarious. All and, of that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it was funny. And, and she was the one who showed me this website. She's like, you know what you sound like? This is what you sound like. And it's like corporate, <laughs> corporate BS generator. I was like, oh, wow, this, this is bad. Uh, really- but yeah, it, it's a, it's a, um, it's, it's a fault or it's something that we fall trapped to as consultants, right? Where we don't become clear and we try to overanalyze and engineer our words, try to either get out of a situation or say things with a lesser of a blunt um, message, right? That we want to say. And, and coming back to our point initially, it's all about communication, right? Build that relationship and have a very easy conversation so you can be honest. You raised a very good point. And I think we, um, as consultants, need to think about 
more rather than okay i'm just gonna you know confuse someone and gonna make sound very smart and you know interesting then at the end of the day um if you really want to add the value you really want your client to understand what you what you mean so um you raised a very good point certainly certainly so how, how would you define consulting at this point three and a half years into ui what's your definition um so the way i see it if someone asks, like, asks me, okay, what, what is consulting? I say it's a doctor for business. Meaning mm. that if something goes bad, you come in and then you kind of fix it. And that's a very simple like definition that I yeah. have in my head. So, And I was actually keen to hear, what do you think? How do you oh. define consulting? <laughs> no, so let me, let me react to yours first and buy time. But uh, I, I think that's a very unique uh, analogy that I haven't heard before. A doctor for business, right? If, if your business is unhealthy and not feeling well, there are people or doctors that you could call and help you. Yeah. Uh, that, wow, wow I'm, I'm impressed. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's no jargon. It's very easy to understand. I get it. It's, uh, and it's true. That's, that's essentially what we do. Uh, the way I would define this, I think, is essentially that, right? Which is if, uh, if you need help with things that are not your core business competencies or focuses, right? These are experts that you hire to help you address those things, right? And that's what at the end of the day consulting is where you have a problem and there's people that can resolve that problem. And those we call consultants. I, that is I an think accent. it's the simplest way to describe it, honestly, without any buzzwords. I tried keeping the buzzwords away. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very nice, neat and sort of a good definition that you can, um, I can't, I'm not sure you can use mine if you're actually talking to your clients, I, but yours is very like, I don't know. I, I think and nice. can. I, well, that's, that's what I'm trying to avoid. I, <laughs> I think I can, and I should use yours, right? I, uh, it's funny, a, a lot of people, like a lot of the social media, I think there's a, because of COVID or, or um, a lot of people getting into this, there's an influx of folks trying to uh, define consulting or a lot of people have great social media channels um, um, out there that try to define consulting. Um, and and that, that's, that's a very, uh, that's a video I always watch and I always listen to whatever content that's put out because I'm still trying to figure out what the right answer is. Um, Everyone has a different perspective. And if you would ask a person, you know, no one is going to have the same definition that that's yeah, for sure. That's the beauty of it, right? Because yeah, yeah. it's kind of like us, right? No, no one has the same background. No one has the the same, perhaps even set of expertise. Everyone brings in the same team, different pieces, and the collective is the, the doctor. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. You know, everyone everyone has their own view, so. Yeah, yeah. so speaking of uh, unique backgrounds, uh, we were talking about, you know, offline uh, uh, hobbies and, and interests, and, and you had a very, very unique one. Uh, I don't know if you still do it, but you used to write rap songs. Yes. You got a rap oh, career. <laughs> I was hoping you were not going to bring this up, but now when you put me on the spot, yeah. I can get a bit of, I give a bit of background. So, so tell actually, me about that. Absolutely. You, how, your rap career and your multi-platinum records. Let's, let's hear it. What's the, what's the story here? So I actually have an album. So it's not just one tune. Wow. It's multiple songs. It's about seven, I would say, if I remember correctly. Now. Seven songs. Yes, and I was wow. like 14 years old. Okay. Some of the lyrics is not really appropriate, so I'm not going to be talking about that on this channel. But um, basically... I, I was going to ask you, what's, what is, the, <laughs> is it on Spotify? How can, how can we hear this? I, people are curious. Unfortunately, it's not on Spotify, and that's oh. probably for the best, because <laughs> I'm not sure if it still would be working uh, where, I, where I do right now. It was me and my best friend, and um, yeah, it was the first song was about my first love, and it was about like... Um, some, it was a lot of different, actually, topics, and um, when I listen to the lyrics, I'm thinking, how did we manage to write all of this so yeah so this i mean i when you told me i i thought it was like uh just a thing you just like you know said rap songs that you heard but seven songs pr produced and and edited and and published to wherever the world you know who listened to it by yourself yeah. and your friend 
It was uh, actually recorded in a professional studio as well. Wow. Which, uh, <laughs> okay, so um, we got to hear at least a sample or you know, <laughs> uh, drop a bar or something. <laughs> we can link in maybe a little part of it. A clean part. We could take a, a clean, easy part. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm so curious now. That's such a unique uh, background. I mean, I've, I've had uh, friends and colleagues who were DJs. That's uh, really, that's awesome. Yeah. But no one with uh, seven records that are professionally produced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I mean, um, that is actually one of my fun facts. You know, one of those awkward situations when you join a new team. Yeah. And then they say, oh, tell a fun fact about yourself. Um, right. So I usually say that. And actually, some of my friends have adopted this fact. And they're also using it now. Even if they haven't done it, they just think that it's a cool thing to say. And it kind of like breaks the ice. So uh, if you don't know what to say, you can also say it, basically. Yeah, but what if someone follows up? So you, you actually have the songs. <laughs> and now uh, I'm going to do my best to extract that from you. But can we can we uh, hear just a phrase or two from, from anything? You could... Um, I would... Let's hear it. Let's hear it. No, oh, first come on. of all, <laughs> I'm gonna, um, um, we can, we can link it in later. So. Okay. Okay. So that's a promise. This is just uh, not to scare off people of your podcast, you know? No, no. I, I think it's such a unique, uh, if I, if I had seven rap songs, I would have loved to, you know, use that as a fact and also, you know, potentially continue with it or, or, or mention it. Um, but that, that is so interesting. I would have never, uh, you know, guessed um, rap out of all genres um, and seven songs professionally produced uh, there. So that, that's very interesting. Thank you. And I mean, that's an excellent attention to detail as well. I don't know how, where you read about this, but uh, well done. You really did your research well here. <laughs> that's great. But yeah, certainly, uh, you know, we'll try to link this uh, a clean piece in, you know, once we post this, I definitely want to hear it. And I think uh, others would too. That, that would awesome. be interesting. So going back to uh, EY, you were talking about you had some great mentors and great managers. Um, any any sort of challenging stories or any anything that you've seen in the past three and a half years that you're trying to improve and, and get better at? Um, yes, absolutely. I think, um, first of all, when you try, um, when you start in a large company, it could feel frustrating. It could feel like, you know, no one really cares about me. No one knows me. It's mm -hmm. a lot easier when you start in a small team um, and you kind of become like a family. Here, um, I'm sure you know it, you know, you work with one team for a month and you switch on and you meet yep. a lot of different people, which is, mm -hmm. again, which is the beauty of consulting. Yep. Um, but sometimes, for example, um, it's quite difficult to say no to projects, even though you know that, you know, your personal interest and your career objectives could not be aligned to it. Mm. Um, so it's basically the staffer says you need to do it. And then you kind of say, okay, yes, um, well, I have no choice. Um, which um, I think the advice I could give here is that um, unless you explicitly um, tell people what you want and where you want your career to go, um no one is going to build it for you so it's important yeah. to speak up and sometimes it could feel uncomfortable or especially again as a junior um but ultimately um i think it is important and it's going to make you feel miserable if you constantly feel like i'm doing something that uh, i basically don't like yeah um so i guess that's probably the challenge in large companies is that sometimes you know you need to do things that you might not necessarily like um but apart from that i think my experience been very nice in terms of my working hours so that is a break in the myth um not mm. everyone works 12 hours a day there are certain areas in consulting where you work less for sure mm. um so uh, don't feel intimidated intimidating like you're gonna you you can have life and you can have a great work-life balance um which again i feel very fortunate to say that um at the y from what i know uh well in especially in tech consulting we do have an amazing work-life balance and really? everyone is very understandable and um everyone understands you have so you could have some other commitments and if you need some time off um that's absolutely not a problem so um very cool 
I think that's that's a very fortunate thing that I had in my experience. Has that always been the case, or is uh, has COVID uh, changed anything culture wise? Whether you're working less now or more. Um, I think I'm working about the same, although okay. I did read the economy study and um, they say that um, av- um, average person works one hour more now. Yeah. Those who are working from home, uh, which I'm actually curious to know how it's been for you, but I'm working about um, the same. And actually, I wanted to bring up an um, important thing, which I think we don't talk um, enough about is we sometimes we try to sort of normalize working hard and the whole please fix culture you know always being online always being available and it's kind of a cool thing to say oh no one thinks it's cool to say oh i actually finish work at 5 p.m it's cool to say oh i'm working so hard like yeah. i'm the last one in the office and but i think it's important that um we don't we try not to normalize that because um burn corporate burnout is very real and it is there and a lot of people struggle with it and they don't know they have that even though um they actually need help and sometimes i want to say when i see someone working extremely hard and very long hours and working weekends um it's just important to ask how are you doing like do you need any help yeah and um I think this is one of the things I wanted to bring up with you. What What do you think about this? What, no, it's thinking? it's an excellent, excellent point, and I I I love that you're being honest about this. I it's something that I thought a lot about, especially this year, right? So just to answer your first question, um, maybe it's unique to me, but I'm certainly finding myself working a lot longer, much more than an hour a day than we used to prior to COVID. Uh, now, because everyone is, I think, working from home, the the expectation or whether it's true or not, the thought behind is that there's no commute anymore. So before when okay. you could at five or six turn off and say, hey, I got to go back, mm-hmm. right? There, there is no going back, right? You're either in your uh, bedroom or your basement or wherever your home office is, your kitchen, right? You're sitting there and, and you're sort of kind of expected to sort of go through it. Um, and I, I, I initially, I would say in, in the summer, I did, I, I saw a conscious effort of trying to figure out what that dynamic would be, but unfortunately it, it yielded and resulted in people just being plugged in constantly now. Um, and, and it's, uh, at least in the engagements that I'm in and here in the United States, I'm seeing this across the board where people are up earlier and, and logging in earlier, emails are coming in sooner and people are logging off later. Um, and, and projects are sort of just continuing like that. But it, I, I totally agree with you. I think corporate burnout is real. Um, but I, I also thought about it from a different perspective, which is like the why, right? Why is it that it's cool to, you know, say, hey, I, I continue working, right? We always say, oh, work, work smart, not hard, but no one really practices that. Everyone either does both or attempts of just doing work, hard work. Um, and, and to be honest, that is what it's also the system, right? The system is designed to recognize um, that more yeah. than uh, working smart. Even if you may be the best performer doing everything, you know, amazingly well, right? If the perception is that this person logs off at five and I'm still here till 10, 11 with other people who are not working smart, right? Then then you're in the negative perception wise. Absolutely. Which I think is one of the probably disadvantages of the culture yeah. we have probably across the corporate world um i wouldn't say just consulting i think i can see it everywhere um which um yeah we we need to we need definitely have a long way to go there we yeah need to change no no the i i um i i fully agree um and i i i don't think it's going to happen overnight by any means maybe the next generation of consultants or through programs that these companies introduce to to have a work life balance maybe it'll get there Right, but I but I do think there, at some point, um, and and this is the case for me. So I'll, I'll be specific, and I can't speak for everyone. But at some point, you do realize that it's diminishing returns, right? Where you can work twenty four hours a day if you want, but there there are factors outside of your control that are not going to yield the results that you want. And when that happens, and it happens once or twice, right? I think then you naturally say, oh. My, my, my working throughout the day and night, it doesn't really 
you know, not to mean much, but it doesn't, that is not what is the variable in the equation for success that, that you can tweak. I think there's other things that I could play better that's going to help me in my career and my progression versus the perception that I'm, you know, continuously working. Um, definitely. You, you kind of also get pissed off about it. Yeah, definitely. And I also, if I feel like I feel overwhelmed, what I tell myself is that, you know, when you're on a flight and the um, uh, a flight attendant tells you, you know, you need to put your own mask first. Yeah. If you want to help the others. That's again, the thing here, you know, if you feel like you feel so overwhelmed, anxious, you really need a break, you're, you know, you can't help your client and you're just not going to be productive. So you're not. Um, always, you know, trying to think what, 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 what is important and prioritizing, uh, which I think, yeah, we is, is also, it's probably one of the, you know, most Hard. useful skills you need to get if you're a successful consultant. Yeah, no, I, I think it is difficult, but but the the silver lining, or I think the the one thing people should note is if you look at a lot of the partners and successful sort of managers and senior management, right? A lot of them do other things outside of work, right? They run triathlons, which is super impressive. Businesses. Yeah. So you sit there, you're like, wait, wait, wait. How do, how do they have the time? Which means that they're not just plugged into work all the time. Maybe mm-hmm. perception wise, that's the case, and they know what are the levers that you need to focus on to really make sure everything is done right or whatever, but they're not really plugged in all the time. So these perceptions that juniors or, you know, as we're coming up have that stay plugged in, that's the way to success. It falls through very quickly. Absolutely. hundred percent. And also um, maybe it's just also understanding what is actually important and the things job you need to do. Cause some, uh, sometimes we all get all those ridiculous requests from the client and it's important to again, assess, what they really need yeah. and if you have capacity if you have time because sometimes it's just always yes 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 we're going to do everything but uh, you know no one ever reads this stuff no one ever looks at it so yeah. um you just understanding and um what what i think i've been again very fortunate and lucky with is that my um senior management has always been very protective of the team and been saying look, we already overworked or we don't have capacity for that. So um, yeah, mm. that is probably a responsibility of the partner or someone senior yeah. to make that assessment. I, I fully agree. I fully agree. And I think it goes back to it. See, always everything comes full circle naturally. It, it's, it goes back to the fear of bringing up things in the and the fear that if you brought it up to a client or whomever, that may be perceived as, you know, either pushback or you may not get the next piece of work. They may perceive you as a, a weaker team. There's so many factors that yeah. go into that. And I think it, it's it's naturally coming from that place, the, you know, the fear of making sure that this person who is paying your bills or this person that can uh, have an influence on whether you stay on the engagement or not may say something that is uh, indirectly affecting it in a negative way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. A really good point. Certainly, Thank certainly. So, so uh, uh, speaking of work-life balance, so you are a successful uh, senior consultant now at EY, and you're also a rising star on the social media side. Uh, your channel way into consulting, and I, I want to understand how you came up with the name. Is it like way into consulting? It's way into <laughs> consulting. How, how? What's the thought process behind the name? And then, how do you manage it with everything going on? I think it's more of a like way into consulting because I remember when I was a student, um, it actually was quite difficult for me to find some good, honest resources and everything was pretty much, you know, on website and um, yeah. I'm as a, let's say as a millennial, I want everything uh, sort of, um, you know, at uh, rich on social media so mm-hmm. it was important for me you know while I scroll through the pictures of uh, you know avocado toast or <laughs> <laughs> whatever is out there on Instagram and I can also you know learn um, yeah. in the meantime which I think was something that inspired me and actually I've been thinking about creating this um, Instagram for maybe a year or so okay and only was sort of brave enough to go out there in August. Um, so, okay. 
and it's it's not scary. I'm not getting any crazy DMs from haters that I'm terrible or that this is horrible. So if you want to start your, let's say, side hustle on Instagram, don't be scared. Actually, people are a lot more nice than you think. And, um, and people need way- that resource. Like that, yeah, that, and yeah. you realize it, that there, there's a gap and people need it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and I'm looking at your Instagram right now. So 2,200 and, and a little bit over followers in, in a couple of months. That's very impressive. I, you need to give me pointers because the consulting guy I started uh, three years ago <laughs> and I'm stuck at 780, but I, I'm, I'm joking. But yeah, so I, th- there's a gap and there's a need and you're fulfilling that need. Yeah, and I, I always think that it's more about the sort of quality of your followers rather than, you know, quantity. quantity, because if you actually have people who say, oh, this is very helpful, you know, and really want to engage right. with you, I'd rather have a thousand than, you know, a million who never engage with me. So um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that is an important thing. And the way I came up with the name was just literally... I was so excited about the idea and I really wanted to create the page. And I actually didn't even think about the name too much. I was like, okay, we're into consulting. Okay, I'm gonna name it Way into Consulting. And then after a couple of posts later, I was like, is this the best name? But I already had some content out there. Yeah. So I couldn't really change it. But now it's kind of okay, if you want to get into consulting, um, if you are a student or already professional working elsewhere. Um, hopefully I can be helpful and, um, and this is your way into consulting. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You follow my page and that's your way to consulting. That's your, that's your sales pitch, the elevator pitch. Yeah. We just created my sales pitch now. That's great. I'm going to see you gave me the definition of consulting. I gave you your (laughs) your elevator pitch for your channel. (laughs) Perfect. Perfect. No, but very, very cool. And I, I love your content. I think, um, um, something to learn, right, for all the folks, especially myself, that are doing social media is the consistency of the theme, the consistency of the content, and, and also posting regularly and, and having topics that are relevant um, that, are, that folks are going through now. So it's a very pleasant page to look at. It's, you know, color-wise and theme-wise. So, so very good job there. Thank and you I, so and much. I, yeah, I, I, I definitely got to take pointers. Thank you so much. And yeah, I just also want to share a bit of like lifestyle as well. Um, yeah. I don't want to talk just about consulting. Say I'm trying sometimes to make it funny or just to show what I do on a regular day. Um, I need to do a better job with that. But um, yeah. No, your recent, uh, uh, was it TikTok or Reel? was hilarious <laughs> with, the, with the keyboard and the, the, the <laughs> piano. It's a, it, <laughs> it, it, it's, it shows creativity, I think. And it's funny because I agree with you. I think the newer generation wants to consume content, whether it be educational or leisure in that, in that format. Um, you know, we don't want to read boring old websites and try to get definitions or whatever. You do want it in a very, you know, bite-sized piece. I agree. And even podcasts, uh, I listen to podcasts like literally everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Like if I'm not with someone, I do listen to podcasts a lot. So um, I think this is an excellent idea. And what I like about your podcast is that it's very honest and it's very conversational. So um, it's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, just just uh, a final thought on that. So are you finding it tough balancing it with your work as well? Or do you have like a rigid schedule? Like I'm going to create my content on the weekends, publish it, and then focus on work the rest of the weekdays. How, how are you managing all of that? Uh, yes. Uh, so I think the most important thing is consistency. So the way it works for me, it actually doesn't take much time. Uh, so I plan my week um, usually on Sunday. So I sit down at 5 p.m. with a nice cup of tea uh, with my notepad and I write down what I'm going to be posting and when. And then after that, I basically uh, maybe it takes about two hours to create almost all my content for the mm. week. And then, um, cause after a long working day or in the middle yeah. of work day, you are not going to be sitting down writing those, uh, <laughs> Instagram captions. So Definitely not. I think, uh, just having everything saved in my notes, um, I use Canva, um, the best thing that you could you basically use. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great. I, uh, so it was, a, um, um, casual management dot consulting. She, she nice. told me about Canva and I, uh, so the world opened up to me and it's so much simpler um, and it's easier. I, I, I was creating everything myself and I have zero art skills wow. whatsoever. 
I, I was the only one who failed art in, uh, in elementary school. So that, Your that's a great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Canva definitely recommended for consultants as well in general. Absolutely. You can create anything. You can create your resume. You can create like a work presentation. Right. Um, I actually did create some slides for work in Canva and everyone mm. was like, oh my gosh, where did you get this, get this gra gra graphics from? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, totally recommend. And yeah, so I don't think it takes a lot of, a lot of time. Um, just maybe, you know, three, four hours every week. Um, yeah, but this is something that I really enjoy doing. Um, so yeah. No, certainly. And, and it's, uh, your page looks great. You're uh, a rising star on the social media, Thank very you. quickly gaining the followers and you have great content. I think that's what people grat gravitate towards, right? It's, it's actually valuable content in bite-sized piece, bite pieces that we can all enjoy and, and learn about consulting. Thank you. And if you have any questions or ideas, um, please do let me know and we can cover that. Yeah, no, I, I, I will do a plug for you. So everyone, please go and follow Anna on uh, Way Into Consulting. Uh, great content uh, every week you post multiple times. And uh, after that, I hope people reach out to you. I think you're a great uh, and easy person to uh, talk to and you have great uh, stories that you can share with everyone. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you and um, yeah Likewise. hopefully we can do um i'm sure this podcast channel is going to grow massively so <laughs> maybe we could do you know another one in a year's time yeah and certainly certainly it would be great to have you back anna thank you so much for taking uh, time on a sunday evening uh and, and coming on the consulting podcast <laughs>